Hello everyone, my name is Bala and today we are going to discuss on one of the most asked questions and we kind of keep getting in our community group, how to avoid your postfix or PHP mailer emails from planning to spam. Now, this is a video sort of guide to solve this particular issue. However, do check the link in the description where we have a complete guide and it can help you out even more better. So this is kind of a, a, a quick video setup on that. All right, so let's kind of quickly get started on this. So first of all, there's nothing wrong with postfix or PHP mailer. Now it's not, the, it's really not the reason that your emails are landing in spam. So understand that first. In fact, these are uh, one of the top most or the best open source tools for generating and sending emails at scale. So you might be thinking that the default email headers uh, which is postfix or say PHP mailer as me might be the reasons to the email landing in spam, but that's not the reason. So understand that clearly. Now, there are other factors which actually trigger the anti-spam engines to classify your emails as spam. Uh, now, ISPs and anti-spams are worried about uh, just three things and you need to kind of keep that in mind. Who is sending, what is being sent and whom it is being sent to. Keep this mantra because this is what they kind of look into it. And here are four email related configurations you need to understand, which will actually help you check how closely your emails compile with various ISPs and anti-spam policies. Right. So let's kind of get started with this. Uh, first and foremost, do follow the standards. When I'm talking about standards, I'm talking about the basic ones, SPF. Um, no, not that cream that you, you know, you know, in every sun cream, you can have an SPF in it. Not talking about that. This SPF is a uh, sender policy framework and it, it is an authentication protocol, uh, which when used allows senders to specify which IP addresses are authorized to send emails on behalf of a particular domain. Right. So understand that with that, definitely you need to know what is DKIM. Now DKM is an acronym for Domain Keys Identified Mail. DKIM protocol allows email senders to identify the domains that belong to them, thus protecting your brand and reputation. And of course, DMARC. Now DMARC is a, a reporting protocol for email authentication. So DMARC kind of, you can say that it uses sender policy framework, SPF and the Domain Keys Identified Mail, DKIM to check email authentication. With that, the TLS encryption. Now, TLS encryption is a cryptographic protocol that ensures network security over end-to-end -end, uh, communication. It is most broadly deployed safety protocol used today by the web browsers and other applications that need to privately transfer data over a network. Again, all this is in much more detail in the link shared in the description, so do not forget or do not miss that uh, uh, article. You get more and more information on this. All right. The second thing, what we've got to understand is the sender reputation. Now, sender reputation refers to both uh, reputation of your sender domain and the IP address of your server, which is being used to send your email. So you need to understand that. Uh, again, check the description for that link. You get more information on that. Let's talk about the speed of sending emails. Okay, so if you have set up a, a post fix for sending just uh, bulk marketing emails or and that to a third party list of a non opt in user, then your emails are born to land in spam uh, in the first go itself. Right. But if you're sending an opt in user base, then ideally it should not land in spam. Right. But despite whatever your email list consists of opt in or non opt in user base, if your emails are landing in spam, then throughput speed of sending emails should be checked. Yes, you should not be sending too much in an hour or a day, any ISP, especially to the top ones like Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook. So send, so instead of sending too much on a day one, send gradually, say 100 emails on day one, and then 150, 200, 500, thousands and so on. Right. Okay. So with that, I hope you kind of got the speed of it, but we need to also understand the types of emails that you send. Right. So when controlling the speed of sending emails is important, but at the same time, it's also very important to keep a watch on the number of positive engagements on the emails that has been sent. Positive engagements, I'm talking about email opens, clicks, replies, and not spam complaint or delete and things like that. So uh, 
uh, which is basically how your emails get attracted to whatever the content that you send, right? So with that, know which kind of email will make these numbers better in the initial stages and send only them in the beginning. Got it? Now, let's talk about the fourth one, which is the reverse DNS and the PTR record. Now, let me be candid here. Now, reverse DNS and PTR records are really a tricky term and not very popular being used among the developers. These two play a very important role when it comes to email delivery. Not having these can make your email land in spam. All right, now let's kind of put it in this way. You already know about DNS, right? Which maps a domain name to an IP address. This process is actually known as the forward DNS. Now, the reverse DNS is just the opposite of it, where DNS map maps an IP address to a domain name which, uh, uh, you know, and uh, both of these are DNS mapping just different in terms of how the lookups happen, right? Now, let's try to understand why this is so important to have this in place. Assume you have a server set up on AWS and sending emails from example.com using one of the AWS IP address 1.2.3.4, which resolves to the uh, to some something like ec2.aws.com. Now, uh, for anti-spam engines, this is very important, you need to understand this. Now, for anti-spam engines, this looks like an unauthorized email setting, where the IP which is being used to the same email doesn't resolve the example.com, who the real sender is. However, it is resolving to some other domain of ec2.aws.com. Okay, now if this is... Anyway, it's kind of sounding very confusing or you want to know more about that. Uh, like I said, there is uh, a link in the description which will link to a, a tutorial page where we kind of talk in depth in where you can really understand it uh, pretty well. Okay. Now, uh, with that, let's kind of move on to, now, and if you're still wondering how to create, uh, uh, you know, you need to understand how to create this DNS in the PTR records. And uh, of course, it is much explained in the, uh, a link, uh, so I would not uh, waste that. I mean, it's a step by step process. I can't show you exactly in the video. However, it is possible only if you have uh, a dedicated IP address with you. So, if you do not have that, uh, it's very tough to go, or it's like you cannot be creating the DNS and the PTO records. All right. Okay. So, well, all these informations are limited, but uh, the leading reasons for your emails to get uh, uh, delivered to the spam folders, uh, uh, these are some of the ones. Uh, uh, which are very prominent, right? However, I hope this information helped. So stay tuned for more insights on handling spams in this particular channel. And if you have any questions uh, about this video or if you have any comments or anything, just feel free to leave a, a comment below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like this uh, video, and do share it with your colleagues who's been uh, who's actually working on this particular issue or trying to solve uh, a spam issue that uh, uh, they have. Right, uh, so uh, stay tuned and look for, uh, uh, for other videos uh, from this channel. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.